Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So a few years ago, several years ago, my youngest son and I went hiking in the Rocky Mountains. My nephew lives in Denver. And he told us, he said, make sure you hike in, on Bear Mountain. He knew where we were going. I believe Bear Mountain, the altitude is top. The peak is close to 13,000 feet. He said, just go and hike all over that mountain. You'll really enjoy it. So, you know, my son and I have had, before this, extensive hiking experience. I myself had hiked in Sugar Creek Township right down here at the reserve. <laughs> and I think that both he and I had spent some time in John Bryan State Park. We started our trek on Bear Mountain at 10,000 feet in the parking lot. It was in the 50s, and I was dressed for that weather. I think it was at about 11,000 feet that the wind really started picking up and clouds moved in. And it actually rained a little bit and it was in the 40s. But we were on a journey. We continued on. At 11,500 feet, right about there, the tree line was gone and it started to sleet. And about 300 feet more elevation after that, probably 11,800 feet, my fingertips went numb. And the sleep had to be hitting me in the face at 200 miles an hour. <laughs> I was putting my head down with my brim of my hat and I could hear it just pounding my hat. And I was thinking, well actually being the, the wonderful father that I am and concerned for my son's safety, I recommended that we turn around and thank God he agreed with that <laughs> recommendation. So we did, we turned around and the sleet eventually, not too soon after we began our trek down the mountain, the sleet stopped and the clouds started breaking up and this appeared in front of me, a rainbow at eye level right in front of us from end to end, and my son, whose name is Noah, <laughs> in the perfect spot for me to pull my phone out and take a picture. I stood in awe at that moment. And the words that we heard in the first reading echoed in my mind. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the cloud, I will recall the covenant I made between me and all human beings and all living beings. And I thought about all those covenants, all those promises we read in the Bible that God has made with us. 
Noah, and his family, Adam, Eve, Abraham, and the Israelites, David and the kingdom, name those. But then the final and everlasting covenant. As we hear Jesus say in Luke, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And with those words, we have Jesus instituting the Eucharist and the sacrament of holy orders. And in this context, he definitively links the sacraments to the new covenant. Later in the letter of Hebrews, Paul says that Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. Later, Paul says in Corinthians that Christian leaders are the ministers of the new covenant. And that new covenant is why we are all here right now. That's why during this season of Lent that we focus on that ultimate sacrifice given by him to us who bore all of our sins, all the sins ever in the world and offers free life, everlasting life to those who follow him. Lent is a time to strive to grow closer to Christ. And we fast as we are called to at this point in our lives. Some of us fast from food, from sweets. Some of us fast from bad habits or actions that we do throughout our days that maybe we shouldn't, or maybe attitudes we have in our lives, or selfishness. What is it that pops in your mind right now that you really need to fast from? Will you enter the desert for 40 days with Christ, as we heard in the gospel, to fast and to pray? Years ago, it was probably pretty many years ago now, I used to be one of those people that went by the motto that seeing is believing. My faith wasn't that strong. You had to prove it to me. And as I threw myself, began to throw myself into my faith, into our faith, as I began to really try to build the relationship with Christ, I realized, and I realize today that Believing is seeing. The more that I build my relationship with Christ, and I am no one special, this goes for all of us, the more that I build that relationship, the more that my life interacts with the divine. The more I realize, the more I see unveiled to me. This Lent, will you truly strive to improve that relationship with him? If you strive to do that, God knows what rainbows will be unveiled to you.